I love the healthy lifestyle. It makes me feel better. It makes me have a happier life. I have that confidence in treating people because I know what's going on underneath the skin. I really believe that ownership of our bodies and taking care back again of our own health is all down to choice. So, Befar, I'm going to give you a lovely back, neck and shoulders scalp treatment today and it's going to ease those tight muscles for you and make you feel stress-free, very relaxed for the rest of the day. But first of all, because you've just laid on the couch, first thing I'm going to do is my towel management and make sure that the towel is tucked in correctly, keeping you secure and safe in the knowledge of where the towel comes to. So whenever I tuck the towel in, I always make a line so that you know exactly where it comes to. So having arranged the towel around the bottom of the spine, I'm now going to sort out the towel at the feet. And to do that, I make a nice, neat, overlapping triangle over the feet Towel management is very important. Then lift the feet and bring the rest of the towel, because I, I like a nice overhanging towel, so you've got plenty of warmth around the feet. And then bring a pillow or cushion, slip your hand under the feet. You take all of the weight so that they don't have to lift for you. And then press the ankles. And the reason I press the ankles into the cushion is quite often, the person will have lifted the feet for you, whether you want them to or not, and then all of the muscles in the back of the legs and the, the gluteals will still be contracted. And so by pressing the ankles and the, the heels down, they know where the cushion is, how far it goes down, how soft or hard it is, and it tells the muscles just to relax. It's a, a nice, secure way that the body knows just to, to be. And so the first thing I'll do is actually connect with with the person and that just means holding with flat hands onto each end of the back just for a few seconds and that helps to ground and connect it's a lovely feeling and we'll be doing this again right at the end And then Bifar, if you could just take three deep breaths for me. And working from the center of the spine, while they're still without oil on the back, you just want to stretch from the center outwards with flat hands. And with every out breath, you pull away. That's it. Nice and slow movements. Next thing I'm going to do is actually to ensure that they are settled. And by settled, I mean that the, the body isn't bunched up. So uh, quite often we get onto a couch and we're hunched and bunched and uh, not spread out, stretched out. So I'm just going to raise one shoulder if she'll let me. Quite often the body will uh, reject that and, and want to tighten up. So we just stretch one shoulder out and then the other, making sure the elbow doesn't come off the couch. We can make sure we can um, look after that ourselves uh, so that the, the person on the couch doesn't have to worry about arms falling off the couch. Quite often the hips will need to be settled as well. You just come round each side of the hip with your fingers just untucking under the hip bone and just give it a little pull and a stretch downwards away from the length of the spine and that ensures you have a nice long stretched out back. It's a beautiful feeling to feel like that. 
So then I'm just going to reach for my essential oils I've already mixed up. So this is a mixture of organic sunflower oil, rosehip oil. They're both carriers, full of vitamins and excellent for dry skin. And I've also put a couple of essential oils in there of Roman chamomile and lavender, both of which are anti-inflammatory, but they will treat dry skin issues and uh, tense muscles and potentially any knots. So all I'm doing right now is just applying the carrier and making sure that it covers all of the areas I'm going to be working on initially. There we are. You need to feel that there's um, some give in the skin, that you're not pulling the skin at all, otherwise it will hurt. And also when I'm giving the, the, the or doing the first part of this treatment, I'm always looking for issues immediately, any skin irritations um, or obvious knots at this stage, uh, anything that's changed from the previous massage in case um, I need to keep them informed of, for instance, um, scarring or moles that are increasing or I any irritations. Eczema and psoriasis show up at this point as well, so um, I might want to change my essential oils for something I find that they don't know about on, on their backs. Um, so I've applied the essential oil and I'm going to start the massage from the top of the spine with an effleurage, keeping your own posture correct all the way through, hands together around the hips, pull back up, around the deltoids, down around the hips, pull back up each side of the spine, not pressing on the spine, round the shoulders, pulling up at the neck. So this effleurage treatment is a way of starting the massage, warming the muscles and introducing yourself to the body. Now the books may well tell you to do three of each technique when working your way around the body, but actually I find that you need to work on instinct. And if there is an area that needs more time, then do so. And then I'm going to come back round double my hands and do a figure of eight around shoulders. Have loose hands so that they are not like trying to massage with metal spoons, but that the hands will mold around the bone and structure of the body. And at this point you'll be picking up where any tension lies, any knots, maybe even where the fascia is tight around the muscle groups. I'm going to home in a little bit more on the top of the trapezius. So the trapezius muscle is actually from the base of the neck to each shoulder point and then it meets again about here, about bra line level. And so this is a diamond shaped muscle called the trapezius which can get very tight with uh, uh, car driving and computer work and the top two lines across the, the shoulder lengths there um, get quite knotty, so they do need a lot of attention normally. So I'm going to come round to the other side and show you how I work on uh, Befar's right shoulder. 
So working on this trapezius now, I'm going to do overlapping hands, pointing upwards towards the head, but not pressing on the spine. The spine is here. And it's very important not to press on the bones of the spine. So I'm overlapping hands, using my fingers in between the shoulder blade and the spine. So they tend to bunch up around this tight area here and then widen when they're able to. The shoulder blade, you can actually trace the outside of it, is from here to here to here, like this. And so I'm going to be working with my fingers nice feeling and then I'm going to use my thumbs one pushing the other one down all the fingers anchoring me down through the same area and going quite deep because of course this time I'm only using my thumbs rather than the area of my fingers so you, it is a you, you are able to get in far deeper And you'll notice that I'm actually pulling the shoulder while I'm doing it because it's quite common for the person on the couch to tighten up at this stage, bunch their shoulders up. So what I'm trying to do is give her the security that she can relax by pulling her open and stretched again. So I'm working in that area with my thumbs, working upwards always, up over the shoulder towards the heart always and in this case it's important because I'm, u I'm working on all of that lymph fluid which is being pushed up and over the shoulders and then down into the lymph factory in the chest to get rid of all those toxins. This area is now quite rosy and warm, it's quite warm to the touch and that's a good thing. You want the area where you've been working um, to be warm because all the muscles are now uh, full of the blood circulation and the circulation brings with it all the nutrients and oxygen in order to give the area healing to get rid of any tightness and of course the lactic acid. The lactic acid builds up through stress and adrenaline release and obviously exercise as well. But lactic acid that isn't disposed of will sit in areas just like this and other areas I'll show you later um, across the shoulders and then the lactic acid will build up what we call crystals because they feel like uh, brown sugar under the skin. Um, and they will sit there happily for years and grow and grow into knots unless you do something about it like stretches, yoga, um, proper exercise that is stretching you or um, a regular massage. So now I'm, now I'm going to um, remind the back that I'm going to do the whole back, not just the shoulders that have received quite a lot of attention so far. So I'm coming down to the base of the spine and this time pushing up from the base upwards. And you'll notice that my movements are quite slow, um, definitely firm, certainly not weak or loose at all, and they are placed. And by that I mean that the person I'm massaging knows exactly where my hands are all the time and that there is no insecurity from them in that they um, are wondering where I'm going to go next or wondering where my hands are at any one time. So now I'm going to divide the back into three parts, the upper, the middle and the lower. 
and I'm just going to do some push-up effleurages separating those three areas. So for instance three on each if that's what you feel the body needs. Coming down and doing the middle section And again, you're looking for tension all of the time. It's what I call a searching massage. You're searching for issues, searching for crystals or tension, knots, anything like lumps and bumps that might be going on under the skin. That you can either correct or work on over a series of massages or need to tell the person about. Okay so now I'm going to be working on the sacrum, the base of the spine and this is actually a part of the spine you can work on which is um, an upside down triangle. So it's from the point at the base of the spine to two points at about this level as so. Okay so I'm going to be working with my thumbs initially And you notice again, it's always upwards towards the heart. Pressure is upwards. Make sure you're not leaning without support under your own weight. Make sure you're doing that dancing massage again. And apply as much pressure as you feel is right. I know that's difficult to tell, but um, actually the sacrum can take quite a lot of pressure um, if e even if I was to put a lot of my body weight over the sacrum now how does that feel for you Befar? yeah it doesn't feel too much no and then it's nice to bring your knuckles into play as well and then work a little bit more around the hip. Our hips take a lot of work and stress and we don't often give them anything back. And a massage, especially a good massage, will always concentrate on massaging the hips here as well. There's a nice flat hip bone right here, which is absolutely fantastic to have massaged one of those feelings that it's slightly strange because it's hardly ever massaged but when it is you just feel right I need that all the time that's definitely doing me good so two knuckles over the sacrum and you see I start in the center small circles get larger to the top of the sacrum and then I work outwards. And around the hips. It's not uncommon for some people, more at the ribs area, but sometimes at the hips, to actually feel that that's quite ticklish there. And you might feel, find that they want to laugh at this point and that's perfectly fine and that's normally associated with all the toxins there and because they've been sitting there pooling uh, for quite a long time they won't want to budge and so it's a very strange feeling when they start moving and that's what makes it feel ticklish. Now because I'm using essential oils I'm in the main doing an aromatherapy based massage today and an aromatherapy massage will work on getting the essential oils through the skin into the blood circulation. That's how aromatherapy works. So on the whole an aromatherapy massage is firm, slow and uh, not necessarily using percussion movements although I will use some percussion movements today and some other techniques uh, for instance acupressure and shiatsu that I bring in to my therapeutic massage. 
What I'm doing at the moment is using my hands to push up the toxins and push them to the sides and down each side of the waist. And then when you come down, make sure that your fingers touch the couch and then you carry on the movement to make a fist and then come back round. Always contact with the person and then down again and carry on. Once I've finished doing the waist, I'm going to come up, come to the side at the top of the back and from the whole length, if you like, of, of the ribs, I'm going to be scooping up some of this uh, tight lymph, tight muscles, but it's the lymph I'm working on here. And you're basically doing a scissoring movement and gripping together the flesh in between flat hands. You, want, you don't want to be pinching, but you do want to uh, aggravate the lymph under the, just under the skin. Then I'm going to make my fingers into a, a straight line from the side of the spine, never on it, and at the base of the ribs, and then slowly bring them down in a straight line all the way around. And then come up a little, do the next section including over the scapula. You'll notice that when I'm trying to locate the spine, I give my straight fingers a little wiggle to see where the spine comes to. Now I'm going to do a um, more surface lymph drainage where I'm not necessarily pressing very firm here. I'm going to use again flat hands, fingers fairly loose but together and overlapping from the edge of the spine outwards and you see my little finger slightly hooks in the reason for that is you're trying to locate that channel on the side of the spine in order to try and hook the lymph out away from pooling and coming down to all the lymph nodes that are on the sides of the body. This movement always feels to the person on the couch as if they are uh, being treated by many people because of the overlapping hands. The muscle group I was just working on, each side of the spine while I was pulling away, this group uh, of muscles each side of the spine here are called the erector spinae. And it's a long muscle working each side as so, and it's a muscle that you don't necessarily want to apply full force to because it's quite strong and it's quite rounded and if I was to press along there now that could probably hurt. So what I do is there's a channel in between the muscle and the spine and that channel needs to be clear. So I work along the channel. You can see how the muscle is bulking there because I'm pushing it. That's the erector spinae there. And I like to have all of my fingers in a line again, working as a team along that channel. It's imperative that we, uh, when we're having a massage, that we clear out that channel. So that was the erector spinae muscle and we've talked about the trapezius muscle which is from the base of the neck to the shoulder points and to this part of the back. There is also another significant muscle which I have touched on but not talked about which is the latissimus dorsi and this is a wraparound muscle in the mid part of the back. It's a large muscle. Uh, but it's not talked about very often because it's normally the trapezius that has the knots. And it's nice to effleurage the muscle and see if there's any particular tension there coming in and out as so. And it, it, this is a searching massage, you're looking for issues all the time. 
after you've used your whole of your hand with an effleurage you might want to come in with your fingers and thumbs to detect any tension any blockages each side of the spine there's no tension here which is good but if there was I would concentrate a little bit more but to be you need to be sensitive to any tension that's there when I'm giving a massage because I've had so many treatments myself I know exactly how things feel and when I've got tension I know how it feels when that is treated and you do need to be sensitive to those feelings so when I'm giving a massage I feel like I'm having it myself I know exactly how this feels right now I feel like I'm having it on my body my back right now and this latissimus dorsi is nice and soft at the moment. There's no tension there, but it is strong. And it's nice for any muscle group to have a massage to release spasm. The muscles will go into spasm frequently. However, often they're used or how, whatever size they are and that spasm needs to be reminded that it can loosen off and quite often they don't know they can but they have to be reminded to and this is a typical type of muscle area here which does go in spasm the mid back some people complain come into me in the clinic with problems just down here and across here. I mean obviously this is the waist area so it could be associated with kidneys but um, more often than not it's from lifting something heavy or bending over without supporting your weight underneath you because this is the part of the back that will support you there and it just simply needs some lavender, Roman chamomile and a nice sensitive soothing massage in that area and it will go. At the point where I'm doing the mid-back there is a lovely technique to do with the latissimus dorsi where you're, it's called ringing, pulling one and pushing the other like a push me pull you nice and slow again very sensitive massage and it has the lovely effect of linking the left and right sides of the body because quite often a lot of massage actually works on linear lines where you're working up and down rather than across for good reason, but this is one of the treatments that you can do to good effect. And then when I'm working on the shoulder blades, the scapula, I like to isolate the scapula and actually not only just work out where it is, but draw a line around it with pressing fingers you can see I'm pressing fairly firmly but not hurting around the outside of the scapula literally like tracing the edge and when you do that it pushes all of the fluids and toxins that I can feel creating knots in there that sit there very happily, not moving, for many days, months or years, creating havoc without you knowing about it, until one day when you just feel this enormous either knot or even stiffness where the uh, muscle and fascia will not move and the shoulder is either frozen or a cricked neck for instance, somewhere in the body where there's so much uh, 
many years possibly of uh, lack of movement or lack of the correct type of stretching movement to release that tension and the, those crystals. So what I'm going to do now, if it will comply with me, is actually pick up the base of, there's like a V at the bottom of the scapula and move it. Sometimes it won't and I have to just raise the arm to the back and then it's more obviously protruding and you can push and pull much more easily. And by doing this you're releasing underneath that flat scapula all of those toxins and that's moving very nicely and then come round and do the other side again tracing the scapula finding the edge of the bone of a nice warmed shoulder finding that V at the base and I think from memory this is the one that doesn't move, but we'll have a little go at it. Just relax your arm into mine, and let it go. Well done. Ah, oh, it's moving. Yay! Beautiful. Well, that hasn't moved for a very long time, I know and it's moving today, so that's a really good sign. Lovely. So with the back massage, you'll have noticed that I've moved around the back somewhat. The effleurage is the whole back, then I worked on the upper area with the trapezius, came down the spine, did the lower area around the hips and the sacrum. Then I came up to the midsection for the latissimus dorsi and the whole spine. And the reason for dotting around the back is to keep it all warm all at the same time. It is important that, for instance, when you're working down on the sacrum, that the shoulders aren't getting cold because it's too long without any treatment. And the same for when you're working on the shoulders. You can use towels to keep an area of body warm if you're not going to be working on it for a while. But I quite like, in a very gentle and sensitive way, to actually move around the back so that it all stays warm. And the back needs to know that it's being looked after and cared for and it doesn't want to feel ignored or left out. And I, I really feel that because some of the back we might actually have muscle memory and be thinking, I haven't been worked on for a while, I need a little bit of attention. And uh, whether you're subconsciously or consciously thinking that, that can actually be um, a thought process. So it's important to make the whole back feel part of the treatment and not ignored. So I'm just going to come back up to the shoulders and I'm going to be doing an overlapping pulling movement. Now because I haven't been working on the shoulders for a little while, they've started to go tense again. So at first, because I can feel that slight solidity underneath the surface of the skin, I'm going to be doing a very sensitive warming up effleurage motion where I'm pulling and warming the muscles and you'll be able to feel when the muscle just starts to give a little bit. At the moment it's still quite tight. But this area of the shoulder from the shoulder point bone and the base of the neck is a nice fleshy area, just perfect fit for a whole hand, indeed the whole width of the palm, to pull up and through. 
and you can see the movement of the muscle there is coming with me and that's good again it's going a little bit rosy so when I'm pulling up through this section here you can see the muscles moving with me that's a good thing you want the muscle to go rosy and warm you want the circulation to be called to the area to help you and I'm just starting to use my fingers as well as the thenar muscle this is the thenar muscle here at the base of the thumb and the thenar is very useful in massage And what I'm doing now is just starting to hook. So the area is nice and warm. The, I can feel the tension is starting to subside. And as my palm and thenar comes over, I'm just starting to hook and keep it as a hook as you come over. As so. And the muscle will move away from your fingers. And so long as it's not too painful for your person, that's okay. It sort of springs away from them when the hook comes over. This is a beautiful treatment for the neck, releasing any neck tension. I use it when people come to me with cricked necks. Um, very good to use with essential oils like Roman chamomile and lavender. Um, other ones, other essential oils I would use in this area for muscle ache and tension um, are black pepper, rosemary, uh, eucalyptus. Uh, all of these will help bring the circulation up. So now I'm just going to come around and do the other shoulder. So having effleuraged warmed up the area and then hooked. Now I'm going to come over slightly more to the neck. So I'm coming upwards still with a rounded hand, slightly hooked, but you don't want to be pressing into the side of the neck, you're just lengthening your fingers as you come round the neck. Like so. Now I'm just going to use my knuckles, standing at the head of the couch, knuckles from the top of the trapezius up and round. I will be working on this area again when Bafar turns over, but at the moment, with the whole back of the neck exposed, it's really lovely to have this area massaged very gently because of course she is lying on her front I don't want to be pressing her head more into the face hole of the couch so I'm just massaging again always upwards like this you see how I'm using my full arm rather than just my wrists or fingers turning the full arm and that helps you with your posture as a as a therapist once I've done that, I'm going to bring my thumbs into the base of the occiput, which is the bone at the base of the back of the scalp. And it doesn't matter that the hairline starts here. In fact, sometimes having a little bit of hair there will help the massage in that it seems to give it more of a stimulating therapeutic feel to the person having the treatment. And then working up and down, again each side of the spine, never on it. And what I'm doing here is holding underneath the trapezius, like so, and then bringing my thumbs as far as I can reach down the spine, working slowly and firmly up to the occiput. A common mistake that new therapists make is not to encompass the whole of the back. 
So you can see I'm almost drawing a line around the whole back. So my pressure comes firm as soon as I start on each side of the spine. Flat palms, flat hands. And I encompass the shoulders. Literally my hands are hooked around the shoulders. And then more lightly down the sides of the back to meet again at the spine. And this is effleurage. I really like also doing a lot of petrissage, which you'll see in the uh, instruction. Now petrissage is when you're overlapping with either thumbs or fingers over a particular more concentrated part of the body. So for instance this would be petrissage where you're focusing. You may be focusing on a knot or just a general muscle in spasm. So that's effleurage and petrissage. There's also a lovely treatment called tapotmol. All these words are French so far. So with tapotmol, it, it, in, it includes a few varying techniques, but namely where you're tapping the skin, or indeed some people might call tapotmol, where you're doing a very light percussion which I will also come to. But my tapotmol uses the fingers. You see how I'm anchored on each thumb over the back. And the reason I would use tapotmol is if the person had any respiratory issue, such as asthma, but even just a simple cold, I would want to use it all over the lungs and then on the upper chest. And it doesn't feel like much to the person on the couch, but actually it's doing a very important job of very lightly stimulating the nerve endings to start working and the lymph and the circulation. Okay, and after tapotmol, I always give a very light effleurage over the surface to calm the, the nerves and the skin surface again. Also, there is a, a movement where you use one knuckle, one thumb, for instance, down each side of the spine, where you're literally giving a little shake. And again, I'm not pressing on the spine at all, I'm just working each side. And this is a vibration massage. And you do have to be sensitive when you're doing this because sometimes if you've been doing a nice relaxing type of massage and then you suddenly go into a movement like this it can make the muscles tense and that's what it's done here I can see they're already feeling a little bit more strong and rounded so I'm just doing it sensitively I'm not hurting or pressing too firmly but I'm still getting the message across to those nerves that's a, a technique used particularly across the shoulders once your person turns over. It's very nice on the trapezius. There's also what I call percussion, which is a much more Swedish type of technique where you're really calling for the circulation to come to the surface and to help with issues like fluid retention and cellulite. So once you've warmed the area up, you would go in with this sort of treatment. And you just want to go to the fleshy areas, or indeed you can do this to the sacrum as well. Particularly nice on that little valley there between the shoulder and the neck. Up and down a few times.
and then with percussion that was called hacking you can also do one called cupping and with this you need to really bend your knees and get down to the level of the couch sounds a little bit like horse's hooves. It doesn't really matter how it sounds, but it does matter what it does to the body. And you can see, you may see, it's gone quite rosy around this area. That's a good thing. And then you'd also do the other side. So that's more your percussion movements. So you've got your effleurage, your petrissage, your tapotmo, your vibration, and your percussion. And then another one is where I use my elbows in more of a shiatsu move, where I'm doing an effleurage to start off with, bringing your forearms into play, bring your elbows up each side of the spine, and at this point you can press in, arms widen and down the shoulders. Do the same again. Nice and calm. Slower the better. And actually your forearms are quite sensitive. They can feel what's going on underneath. You're putting quite a lot of pressure on with your upper body and you can be as slow or as firm as you like here, within reason. Obviously you need to be sensitive to the person's breathing and whether by pressing on their lungs for too long, if it was too long, you're affecting their breathing. So just one more time. Now that is a lovely place to rest. So I've got my elbows in between Befar's shoulder blades and the, short, the elbow point is just starting to press you can feel it at the bottom of the shoulders in, into the trapezius and I'm moving slightly more down and through lovely again it's gone nice and rosy but hopefully it felt okay. It feel all right, Befar? She's asleep. <laughs> and up the neck. And then looking soon to finish the back ready to turn over. I'm putting my thumbs down each side of the spine again to clear away. And all the time you're doing a searching treatment, you're looking for any issues, even that may not have been there at the start. Because quite often I'll be working on the back and then during a treatment, I'll find a knot that wasn't there to start off with because it's come to the surface all the tent that means all the tension around it has started to dissipate revealing the knot you see i'm bringing the shoulders up in a sort of pinching movement but a lovely pinching movement 
finishing off with an effleurage and just as I did at the start some grounding and connecting it also tells the person that they're rested and they're going to be ready to turn over shortly Now that Bifar has turned over, just need a little extra oil. And then come and sit down. And start the massage in the centre, pulling away and sweeping around the shoulders up to the base of the hairline. Again, and then one hand across, taking care not to pr press on the front of the neck at all. You're just touching across the clavicle, the bone across here. One hand and the other across the line of the clavicle, and then up strongly up the back of the neck. As a therapist, always make sure that your seat is at the right height. Your back is straight at this point. Um, it is important to be quite low at this point. You certainly don't want to be stooped over the person. And when you're pulling, you can feel the strength in your own back and your own core muscles. And that's important because that's where your strength is coming from. Not simply from your hands, it's coming from your whole body. And you'll, you may notice I'm actually slightly digging in underneath the clavicle with my fingers across there. Again, it's all about clearing. And then you might want to start coming down the neck. You don't want to be pressing on the throat at all. So you're coming up the back of the neck, round the sides, and then each side of the gullet. You can feel it. It forms a little tube at the front there, but you certainly don't want to be pressing on it. So you're working out where it is. Again, do a little wiggle if you need to. And bring your fingers down each side of it to clear. Very good for your fingers as well because instead of pressing down, they are pressing, but the shape of the person's shoulders and trapezius, when you're pressing like this, will actually stretch them in the other direction and it feels good for you at the same time. Bonus. Now bringing Bifar's head to one side and the head is resting on my palm so that I've got control over how far over the head goes. And then I'm using one hand only up in the same type of action that I've just been doing. And then I'm going to do a knuckling using my knuckles and I want to do that underneath the ball of the shoulder here. You can see there's a little, you can feel it with your thumb, there's a little ridge underneath where you can massage. It is slightly strange feeling to have that done, uh, again because it's not familiar, but it's something that needs to be done and it doesn't need to be done too firmly. You know, sometimes you want to ask your person how does that feel and is, is the pressure okay? and then come round the back of the shoulder behind the trapezius 
and up the neck and then down round in an effleurage and in a knuckling if you like this knuckling is like using petrissage but with the knuckles instead of the front of the fingers or the thumbs and this little area that we've worked on when Befar was lying on her front this little valley here of muscle and flesh without bone being there is beautiful to have massaged but also quite easy to do as a therapist what I'm doing is pressing down with my forearm on the couch um, so I'm not moving my forearm back and forth but I'm simply rested and then taking all the power from my pressure onto the couch into the shoulder. Now sometimes this area can be incredibly sore for people that have tension there, maybe tension that's been there for months or years. Um, so you need to be sensitive to that and make sure you're not hurting too much and that you're simply relieving the pain and um, soothing the muscle and with heat and with ongoing massage that tension will go. So now I'm using my thumb a little bit more deeply because it's simply the thumb on its own rather than the spread of knuckles into the trapezius here going lengthways along the top of the trapezius. Muscles do like you to work along their lengths rather than across them and this is this is what that's doing in a, a nice soothing way and at this point if you find a, a knot or a particular focused area of tension although I can't feel one here it's just there's underlying tightness but nothing nothing too bad today so that's good but if I was to feel a knot I just want to slow slow and firm go into that area and then if there was a knot I would ask the person to breathe in if you, if I, if you could just take a nice long inhalation and exhale and then I'm going to press with my thumb on what could be a knot there and then I can keep my pressure on while they carry on breathing either deeply or normally and they will find the first time I press that it can be quite painful and then the longer they breathe the pain just goes even though I'm continuing with the same amount of pressure and where I'm looking when she's breathing is actually her area of stomach because I can see the towel moving up and down and that's what I'm working with when I'm working with the breath. A little bit more knuckling around the shoulder, up the neck and a bit of a stretch. and then back to centre-ish and then I'm going to work down that side of the gullet it can be quite tight in there looser as you work up to the top so just be aware that you don't want to be pressing too firmly but it's quite nice to have it nice and firm under that occiput bone the occiput bone is here and I'm just pressing with my four fingers there into the fleshy part underneath the bone in a circular motion which is very stress relieving. This area can immediately help headaches and head tension.
and then back to center. So having completed the individual shoulder massage, I'm now going to work more firmly up the back of the neck to prepare it for a beautiful neck stretch. So I'm working with my fingers quite firmly up each side of the spine from in between the scapula across the valley and then up the side of the neck and into the occiput and you can see Befar's neck and head stretches just gently but therapeutically. This, this stretch really does release head tension and pain, headaches and trapped nerves and isolated areas of pain across the shoulders as well. And now I'm going to come up into the next stretch and you're taking the full weight of the head which is very easy to do so long as you've got your posture correct I'm holding the base of the skull in one hand and then I'm going to bring the two fingers down each side of the spine as far as you can go and then bring those two fingers each side of the spine and up and the neck will stretch a little bit more as you come up and you're taking the full weight. Now, some people will not want to relax at this point. And it's a case of reassuring them that they can let go. You've got their full weight. You're able and strong enough. And then as you come up, you can just give the neck a little, a little squeeze at the top. and they'll walk out of your room feeling taller and better. And then once you come down again, you just want to gently pull again in the same motion, but while they're still lying down in order to remind the neck this is how far you can go. This is a beautifully relaxed set of muscles. The muscles around the neck are called the sternocleidomastoid muscles. And they do love a massage and they can relax it quite easily once treated. And then once you've done the neck, I like to put double hands on the sternum, over the towel, round the shoulders of the neck, and then continue with full hand touching over the scalp. Double hand. Stay in contact the whole time until the hands touch at the top. And gently pull the hair. In one fluid movement, bring the head up to sit on the palms. The palms are next to each other and yet the ring fingers of both hands are overlapping and holding on to the main acupressure point of the meridian, which is just in the very centre of the underneath of the occiput. And I'm holding that and then beautifully you can feel it inflating and deflating with the breath. And as I'm watching Befar's breath 
as the towel moves up and down at her abdomen, I'm able to feel the same movement at the occiput. And then as they breathe out, you just apply a tiny little bit of extra pressure, which will stimulate the workings of the acupressure point. This meridian looks after the main center of you and works around the whole center of the body. And then with the next finger along, the long finger, I'm going to find the next acupressure points which are each side of the occiput. I'm going to let the head down a little and be able to again feel the breath. Now these points are each side of the muscle coming down each side of the spine, the erector spinae, and there is a little hollow again just like with the main occiput acupressure point. And I can feel lovely little movement with Befar's breath. And then working to the fourth and fifth acupressure point on each side of the neck. It's actually what we call the saddle underneath the ear bone, the whole scalp underneath the ear. Under there you'll feel again a little, a little gully where your finger fits perfectly and watch for the breath. I always find that breathing alongside my clients helps me to be in tune with them and I'm then able to apply pressure at the relevant time according to my breath also. I'm going to come on to the scalp massage. So the first thing is to bring your hands underneath the base of the scalp and then knuckle into the neck and continue. Knuckle as a warming exercise because this is the first time the scalp has been massaged all over, quite gently and again sensitively, all over the scalp. And when I'm doing this, I'm anchoring by using my thumbs like this. So my knuckles are working, but my thumbs are anchoring me like this. And then by anchoring, they can also be massaging at the same time. And you can isolate that movement. And by using your thumbs, just like I have in other parts of the body, it actually warms and massages more deeply in a more focused spot than using the whole width of the knuckles. Now I'm coming in with my fingers, I'm separating my fingers so that I'm covering a wider area of the head. And I'm actually working quite firmly and instead of having flat fingers uh, using the pads I'm actually coming on to the ends. There's a lot of, obviously, nerve endings and tiny muscles all over the scalp that are stimulated when giving this type of treatment, especially if we don't have a scalp massage very often. 
sometimes hairdressers these days will give you a nice scalp massage or an Indian head massage but to have the scalp massaged in this way is actually stimulating and yet relaxing all at the same time it's telling the muscles to let go and bringing oxygen to the brain Now I'm going to use the flats of my hands over the top of the hair as well in a whole scalp massage. I'm copying the hands so they're doing the same thing. And I'm just making sure that the skin on the head is able to move. You can bring the head up so that the head rests on your hands and move the back as well and the top. And then I'm going to comb. So I'm just working on the scalp, not on the hair. I'm not doing the whole length of the hair but I'm making sure that I'm covering every part of the scalp with a combing technique. All of this is to release tension and to encourage the body to look after itself, to engage with health and to start its self-preservation and ability to heal itself. And now I'm going to use some acupressure where I'm going to overlap my thumbs and come down in a line over the top of the scalp in fairly firm but not painful movement in a straight line as far as you can go until you reach the couch. I'm going to draw a line each side and these are meridian lines that I'm working on that are used for acupuncture but also acupressure. And then a nice massage. and a gentle hair pull until the ends of the hair but again not hurting and then connect and ground. Prepare the room. Ensure the room is warm, secure, the phones are off, that the couch is ready and comfortable, there are extra blankets on hand, and that the room feels inviting. So you might want candles, for instance, you might want soft lighting and soft music. Prepare yourself. By that you need short nails, you need to be 
clean and ready so that you can massage without restricted movement within what you're wearing. You need to be grounded so it's nice to have feet flat on the floor and see yourself as grounded before giving quite a, possibly a light-headed or spiritual treatment and you need to do some deep breaths in order to release any of your own tension and your own tightness before being able to give a nice relaxing body massage. Prepare the oils. By oils I'm talking about a carrier oil which can include a whole array of different sources. Some are nut based that those with allergies need to be aware of, for instance sweet almond, and some can be beautifully healing in their own right even without essential oils being added, for instance sunflower oil which has plenty of vitamins. And then you may like to select your essential oils depending on the person having a treatment, what their body requires, what ailments they may have. Settle and connect. By settle, I mean settle the person so that they're relaxed into the couch. And you may want to stretch their shoulders out, move their hips slightly so that they're not bunched up. And then by connect, I mean hold the top and the bottom of the spine, for instance. Just in a few seconds, you feel that connection and you and they uh, are now able to start the treatment. Search and notice. A searching massage is one where you're looking for areas to treat, whether that's tension or whether that's areas of uh, pain or soreness. That could be the skin or muscle underneath. It could be tension within the abdomen, for instance, not just the shoulders. And so a searching massage is one where you're actively aiming to treat each massage separately, individually. And noticing is noticing those areas and then treating them accordingly so that you are uh, dealing with issues as you reach them. Posture and techniques. By posture, I'm talking about your own posture. Make sure that you are balanced and grounded. And when you're giving a massage, that you're almost doing a dancing massage where you're balancing your way up and down the spine rather than reaching without having a base underneath your weight. It's very important to think about yourself during a massage. And secondly, your techniques. Use your whole toolbox of all the different massage techniques techniques including the effleurage, petrissage and the knuckling, the vibration techniques uh, in your little toolbox to be able to treat that back, neck and shoulders. Slow and firm. The best massages are ones that are slow enough to notice things and firm enough to treat those issues. People often ask me, how should a massage feel? How do I know if I'm doing it correctly? Ask for feedback from the person you're treating and make sure that you respond effectively. Towel management. It's really important to make sure your towels are covering all of the body parts not being treated and that will provide security for the person being treated. They don't feel they're exposed or vulnerable and it will also obviously keep them warm. It is important to keep muscle groups warm and even when you have finished a section, for instance the back, it is important to keep that area covered with a nice warm towel and I often have towels heating during the treatment so that at the end I can then cover all the massage and muscle groups that I've been working to keep those areas warm. Close and ground. Bring your massage to a close by holding your hands in a flat palm position at the top and bottom of the spine in order to let the person know that you're coming to an end of that particular part of the treatment and it rounds off the treatment for them 
and ground means make sure that your person feels grounded at the end of a treatment and that is important because they quite often can feel lightheaded when they first get up after a treatment understandably and also they may have had quite a spiritual moment having a lovely treatment and you just want to get them up slowly give them a glass of water and talk to them nice and softly warm and feedback by warm I mean make sure they stay warm after a treatment it's quite often that my clients may feel cold after the hot towels have been on them and then as soon as they get up they suddenly feel cold and they need to have a nice heated room in order to get their clothes back on again and feel warm and secure and feedback is that it's interesting for them to have your feedback on the treatment so for instance what you may have found and how you treated it Okay Jackie, so what I'm going to do today is run through the six main essential oils that I use in my clinic in order to introduce you to how to use them at home and also how to use them safely. Okay, is that all lovely. right? Yep. First one we're going to look at is the beautiful lavender. lavender. My favourite. So I've got the lavender essential oil here, that's just a neat essential oil, nothing else in it. Okay. And it's actually called Lavandula angustifolia. Okay. Fabulous. Which is the best one. And then I'm going to mix it here with a moisture lotion that you'd put on after maybe having a shower in the morning. Okay. And then your body has the moisture but also healed with the lovely lavender. Okay. okay. I'm just going to add a couple of drops. There we are. And then if you want to have a mix of that and then put a little bit on the back of your hand to see if you like the smell. Oh, I can and smell it immediately. Yeah. yeah. How does it smell to you? Beautiful. It's one of the most, I think, common lavender is, is everybody can use lavender and uh, I think it's the first oil that everyone would go for. Can lavender be used neat? It can and out of the thousands of people I have treated, there has only ever been one reaction to using it neat. Good. And so I'd say generally yes, but do a patch test on the inside of your forearm okay. with a little lavender neat and then see if there's any reaction. Obviously wash off if there is. Any particular place? I mean, I know in your hands is a good place for inhalation, but anywhere on your body? particular like uh, temples the temples maybe? is beautiful that's right yeah. it can be used for spots as well so it can oh, be right. uh, applied to the face but as you just said then to rub it into mm. the palm of your hands and then inhale and around your nose mm. um, is, is just a, a beautiful way Brilliant. to relax and calm so what the lavender can be used for yeah. is for skin for stress for sleep it's highly antiseptic but also it's a balancer so it would be used for um, for instance irritability or for worry for insomnia and sleep issues although not to use too much because it can do the opposite so just a few drops on yeah. the pillow because it can be quite strong then can't it because it's too close it can be a bit overpowering yeah, yeah. i mean some people don't like lavender so no. it's all to do with following your instincts and okay. finding something that you like so you like that one yes good to mix with others as well Lavender mixes with anything. Every, right, yes. good. That's yes. nice. And there are hundreds of essential oils and it will mix with anything. Let's go on to Roman chamomile. Okay, mm. Roman chamomile is quite an expensive oil, but I use it probably every day in my clinic. It's okay. one of the best oils second to lavender right. in terms of the amount of different opportunities with ailments that you can use it. Okay. It's highly anti-inflammatory. Wow. So what I've prepared here is just an aloe vera gel. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to feel what it's like with, there you go, just a few drops of Roman chamomile mm. Wow, in that's with the aloe quite vera. a strong smell actually as well. I always say about Roman oh. chamomile, it smells like brandy. Yeah. Like you could get quite drunk on very, it. Very, very strong. <laughs> yeah. I'm quite surprised actually. Yeah. And so just again, if you can find a little bit of skin, find put a side. little bit mm. and then feel, obviously you've got the cooling of the aloe vera, which is just a neat gel. Yeah. And then you've got the anti-inflammatory of the Roman chamomile. 
it, this can be used with children as well which mm. is fantastic for eczema psoriasis skin eruptions oh. and so my word with roman chamomile is eruptions so when we have eruptions of the skin and also this can mean the mind as well so when we're um over worried or over active or we just need to calm down a bit a bit including the skin and the mind mm. then the roman chamomile is the one to Very use good. that's lovely actually very good. Good. Next we'll go on to bergamot. Oh. Now bergamot, not many people have heard of and yet a lot will have tasted it because it's in um, Earl Grey tea. Ah, citrusy, sweetie. Is it sweet? It's naturally sweet because oh. it's a citrus fruit and it looks a little bit like an orange. Uh -oh. And um, I've got some here with some hand wash. Okay, right. so we're going to have a little practice of washing our hands and then and then go and uh, wash it off afterwards okay so if you want to have put a little bit in the palm of your hand and just feel how that would feel if you were to wash your hands or have a shower oh, with with the bergamot it would mm -hmm. wake you up in the morning make yeah. you very uplifted and refreshed very good and just have a really uplifting effect very nice um, it's very good with people with depression mm. and again with psoriasis so anything where the body just needs to be told everything's okay just calm down a bit right. and yet it gives you that lovely feeling of uplifted right yeah very good so did that feel good on yes. your hands you can imagine it's, washing it's yourself in the morning lovely. with that so mm. we'll just go and wash our hands off and then come back to this okay the fourth oil I'm going to talk to you about is tea tree and again one of the more common ones you'll have heard of it yes. you've used it before yes. good healing how do you use it um, my son occasionally gets um, cold sores and uh, we treat it sometimes you know damming it straight on immediate tingle and yes it's good great but I also uh, use it in a burner as oh. well because I quite like the smell of it do you? Yes, I do. It's one of those smells that I do like. Do you use it when there's colds around then, to, as an yeah. antiseptic, or just generally? I just, just generally. Oh. It's one of the ones I keep in the kitchen. It's, I know it's probably weird. It's probably not supposed to be used like that, but that's the smell I like. However, it's fine. Yes. That's, that's good for you. <laughs> Although, the one I'm going to show you today is Melaleuca alternifolia. Oh. It's a beautiful tea tree. How I'm going to use it with you is actually in a cleanser. So something slightly different. So this would be a cleanser for the face right. and the neck mm -hmm. um, after wearing makeup during the day or first thing in the morning. Okay. So we're just going to mix that together there and then just feel and smell how that would feel okay. for, for your face and Ooh, see how you... My favourite. Really? Is, I do like it. And I, and I, you recently made something, I think you made this up with clove for my Oh, yes, yes. That I had... Um, not with the cleanser though. No, not with cleanser. No, with the mouthwash. <laughs> I was to mouthwash it um, with water, just to dilute it with water. But And did it work? Perfectly, yeah. So the way I would use mm. it, because it is highly antifungal, mm. antiseptic, and also um, antibiotic. Right. So very powerful oil. Um, and it can be used in the home or with children mm. uh, as a mouthwash or even to gargle with, obviously yeah. in with half a glass of pre-boiled water, water so that it's sterilized. Mm. A couple of drops in with the half glass of water, gargle, 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 keep spitting out. Yeah. And then you'll find that the sore throat will go and also the infection will go. You need yes. to keep doing it twice a day. Though. Very good. Yeah. Um, and also very good for mouth ulcers, for treating candida, and for uh, verrucas on the feet, wow. for instance. Good. Yes. Diluted yeah. again or neat? Because verrucas, you know, you always think, oh yes. I would use it diluted. Diluted. Uh, tea tree is one strong, of those that people can have skin reactions right. to, so you've got to be very careful, okay. uh, especially with children or the elderly. Okay. Um, so just a, a little bit of uh, sensitivity with okay. it. Yeah. Lovely. Okay, so we're going to go on to our fifth oil, which is beautiful rose, which is like this. <laughs> 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 such a sweetie. It's a hug. Oh, right. It's a hug. Oh, yes. Rose is a hug. And what I'm going to mix up for you today, I've actually already put in organic sunflower and organic rose hip. 
carrier oils. Ah. So those aren't essential oils. No, that's and then your base, I've, yeah. I've got the rose here, which I've had to warm because it can go a little bit thick. Okay. I'm going to just put a little drop in there. What's rose used for then? It's not it's not an oil I would go for in the shops, basically. Well, do you know why you wouldn't? Because it's incredibly expensive. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. It's not something you see. It's not one of the most common. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, if you can find any more skin, maybe inside oh, of your that's arm. that's beautiful. Yeah. Summertime gardens. Yes. Isn't it? It's yes. beautiful. English country garden, yes. maybe. Yeah. Uh, this rose is Rosa Damascena. Oh, lovely. Isn't that gorgeous? Yes. And it's absolutely beautiful as a facial oil. So that's how I've brought it for you today. Mm. So that if you can imagine being able to Very put it nice. on your face, you can do now if you want to. Very good for allergies, especially mm. headaches created by allergies. So whether it's sinus, it's sinus or stress. Very yeah. good. Um, it's beautiful again on mature skin. Very and good. for hormonal balance and that's oh. one of the main reasons I use it when people are grieving uh, following whatever it might be I use rose when people have hormonal balance whether it's to do with uh, ladies or menopause or issues of the month then I al always use rose mm. and immediately they all smile yes. as, as soon as I use I it because see. it just makes you feel yes. loved and cared for and just it's beautiful very nice looked after yeah, yeah. good yeah. very uplifting in a in a quite a um, what because it, it, it is a bass note so it, uplifting in a bass note kind okay. of way yeah the last oil today is eucalyptus smithii that is its latin name wow. so it's smith with two eyes ah. eucalyptus smithii. smithii and what do you think of when you think of eucalyptus um it's mostly inhalation because it's actually clearing the sinuses i don't know if that's right but that's how it's it's one of those cleaning cleansing things for me okay uh, very good in a, a diffuser again yes Yes. That's how I like to use a lot of oils because I'm not good at mixing them. So I diffuse a lot. So Sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Now with this one, I'm going to use it neat with you. Okay. And we're just going to put it in the palm, the centre of the palm of the hand. Okay. Just one drop each. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we're just going to rub. Now don't touch your face when you hold this up to your nose. Okay. okay? So just hold your hands around your nose. Oh, beautiful yes and it immediately it goes mm. up through the nose to a bulb in your head behind the nose and eyes called the olfactory bulb olfactory mm. meaning smell and then it sends a message directly to the gland in the head which will deal with clearing mm. okay and uplifting. that's why i think sinus clearing as well good in a Dis uh, dis diffuser, diffuser or an yeah. inhaler it's good on um, damp cotton wool on a radiator if people mm. haven't got inhalers but the, the the best way is actually in a diffuser okay yeah. not good then direct on the skin you wouldn't put it under I wouldn't put it on the face no because it has a cooling effect it contains oh, menthol right. which you, you can t you yes. can smell the menthol yes. in there so the the chemical menthol you wouldn't want on the skin because you'd feel it immediately go cold on the skin all right yeah very yeah. good but yeah. no beautiful but lovely yes on the palms of your hands and inhaling and um, I also use it for muscle aches uh, because in a massage for instance a back neck and shoulders if someone's got tense muscles then I will use the eucalyptus because it's very good at calling the circulation to the system right. and dispelling knots and tension all around the okay. shoulders increase the breathing and it would help relax yes yeah. so it makes you breathe better yes, doesn't I it eucalyptus so. yes yeah very nice thank you very much you're welcome